All right, welcome back, watch fans. We've got a uh, special episode for you today, a watch collection review, one of our you know legendary brutal watch collection reviews. Uh, and uh, today we are reviewing the watch collection, two watch collection of Billy Wow. Wow, whoa. I actually don't know how to pronounce it properly. W-A-U-J, wow. Billy Wow, who was, um, this guy was a... Uh, 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 a really interesting character. He he died last year at the age of 93. He, uh, this guy spent, I mean, like really almost to the last day he was working for the CIA. I mean, he was, um, he was in the special forces in Vietnam um, and uh, spent like 50 years with the CIA. Crazy life story. And today we are reviewing the Billy Wow collection. Now, if you want to get a, a, your humble watch collection reviewed, just uh, you know, click uh, you know, look in the video description below. Send an email to brutalwatchreviews at gmail.com, and your collection will be featured here on this channel. Uh, of course, please, no shitter watches, no uh, like uh, you know Hamilton or uh, you know I don't know Tiso, no quality stuff, uh, Rolex, AP. You know, possibly Omega. Anyway, we're going to get into this story. Now, before we start, before we start, just a quick reminder. If, you, if you're if you one of the few sorry people who has not yet subscribed to our free newsletter, do that right now. Because this is our weekly newsletter. goes out every week. The latest watch market news, auction prices, results. Everything you need to know about what's happening. Look, if you're a serious watch collector, you're going to know everything there is to know about what's going on right now in the market. What's moving? What are the trends? Because this is not just about what happened last week. No, what we do is we tell you, we give you the insight into the trends so that you know about what are going to be the next hot watches. Uh, look, you know, all of a sudden everybody's going crazy about the Aquanaut, the Patek, uh, you know, Nautilus, the Aquanaut. Uh, Royal Oak, you know, you would have known all about that stuff years ago if you had been a subscriber to our newsletter. Because, and I, I got to tell you something: if you read Monday's edition of the newsletter, you're going to find out what is the next big watch, and uh, you know it's going to surprise you. So, click the link in the video description below to get our free weekly newsletter. Now, let's get into the Billy Wow collection. Now, let me actually pull up something really interesting here. There is. There is a, uh, let's see, I want to share this with you because there's actually, you can read all about this guy on the internet. It's a crazy life story. I'll uh, kind of walk you through this here. Hang on a second. Should we go through it? There we go. Okay. So, yeah, there, there's actually an interesting website called The Watches of Espionage. Uh, and, uh, you know, I guess it's whatever. You know, they talk about different watches. I mean, you know, there's, you know, it's really. There's only a handful of watches, but okay. Anyway, they got this incredible article about this guy, Billy Wow. So he started off, I think he went, he was from Texas, right? Of course, he's from Texas, right? Uh, and yes, he's drinking coffee. Look at that. There's a, a CIA cup of coffee uh, over there. Now, this is real coffee. This is not the uh, Bark and Jack coffee over there. Anyway, so Billy Wow, born in Texas, runs away from home, tries to join the, the Marines. They don't let him in uh, at the age of 15. Ends up in the army in North in the Korea, right? He goes in the Korean War. Next thing you know, uh, the Korean War is over. He's still in the army, he, and uh, then he gets into Vietnam and he uh, joins the special forces. Uh, and um, part of something called Mac V Sog, Mac V Sog, which is uh, really really interesting. Uh, this is uh, basically these guys were like um, doing. Uh, I guess it would call it black ops. Uh, you know, they would just parachute these guys behind, uh, not even not in Vietnam, not even like where the, the action was. I mean, they would go into Laos, Cambodia, uh, you know, to, to you know, I guess disrupt the Ho Chi Minh Trail and all that. And essentially, so the issue was that you can't get into Laos. I mean, in theory, the U.S. is, you know, apparently these wars, you have to, <laughs> you have to conduct them legally, right? You have to conduct these wars legally, LOL. Uh, you know, there's apparently these written rules, but of course, nobody really follows it. But in theory, you have to follow the rules. And the U.S. had not declared war with Cambodia and Laos. So, you know, U.S. soldiers technically couldn't be there. 
So basically, uh, you know, uh, the special forces, they would have a couple of these guys, this group called Mac VSOG, which stands for like military assistance, uh, special operative. It's a very like ban banal name. It like means nothing, but uh, it's always like the military, whenever these like very banal uh, type names, like, you know, uh, the, uh, I don't know, uh, Happy Monday company or something. It, it means something that these are serious guys, right? Anyway, you know, it's, it's funny. Like today, everybody uses this word badass. I'm a badass. You know, you're a badass. You know, this, you know, it's, it's, there's always like some, some chick on Instagram. She says she's a badass or whatever it is, right? I don't know where this word came from, <clears throat> but literally, um, this guy was a le legitimate badass. This is a legitimate badass guy. So he was one of the first guys. So of course this this Mac V Sog right they had like a hundred percent casualty rate right hundred percent so anybody who joined this either they'd end up dead or they'd be wounded whatever behind enemy lines and um, long story short long story short uh, he was the first guy one of the first guys doing uh, something called the Halo jump right Halo which means high altitude low opening so they drop these guys out of a plane or they actually they would jump out I don't know twenty thirty thousand feet up. They jump, go down really quick at night, middle of the night. They're dropping at a you know twenty or thirty thousand feet, but they don't open the parachute till about a thousand feet, right? They open the parachute a thousand. Why do they do that? Well, listen now. Look, I you know I mean I was in Vietnam. I, I shot down MIGs. You know, that's how I got my turnograph, the Rolex turnograph. Well, you know that's slightly exaggerated, but look, this is uh, why do they drop? Why do they do this? Because they don't want to be detected, right? So you don't want to be floating down for you know 20 minutes in a parachute, right? No, you want to drop like a stone and open your parachute like you know literally the last second, which is you know a thousand feet is not a lot. A thousand feet is like um, you know that's like a typical office building in Manhattan, really, or L.A. You know, one of the big tall office buildings in L.A. That's about a thousand feet, so it's really very very tight window. And yeah, so here, here we got some pictures of Billy Wow Wow here in Vietnam. He's wearing, what is he wearing? What kind of watch is he wearing? We believe that is a Rolex GMT. That is a Rolex GMT. And he did get his first Rolex uh, GMT in Vietnam, right? Uh, by the way, here is his day date, 36. Bust down. This is an aftermarket aftermarket diamonds uh, on the bezel and the dial. Uh, this is Billy, and here he is retired or you know actually not retired this is probably in his 70s working for the cia uh and here he has his gold rolex day date so this guy has got some crazy crazy story anyway uh he this i mean literally did everything he was working again from from vietnam all the way into all the way into um afghanistan I mean, he was he was on the ground in Afghanistan. I'm going to show you some of these crazy pictures, Billy Wow in Afghanistan. Uh, he uh, was in Sudan with uh, Saddam Hussein. He, he helped capture Carlos the Jackal, who was you know major terror. Actually, Carlos the Jackal was probably the biggest terrorist. I mean, this guy may have been bigger than Osama. He was uh, on the run for also like 20 years in the 70s. Um, and uh, they say Billy Wow, Billy Wow killed more people than cancer. This is the you know, well, I don't know if this is true, but he, he's uh, he was uh, he was definitely very active. And here we got a picture of him as a special forces guy, and you know, I guess he was in his thirties then. And uh, here he is, probably around seventy in uh, Afghanistan. Um, crazy stuff. So let's talk about his watches. He had a two watch collection. He had a two watch collection, right? You know. All you, all you tomato cans, you got 20 different watches. Oh, I got to have a, a dive watch. And uh, I need a, a dress. I need to have a JLC dresser. Oh, and I need this. Now, listen, this guy, this guy had only two watches, right? He had a, a GMT, right? He had a Rolex GMT Master, the Pepsi. Uh, and then he later on, he got the day date, a bust down day date, uh, which he actually got in sudan in the 70s or i think it was libya or sudan uh it is unbelievable but who carlos hatchcock i don't know is that a real name is this is this i don't know what that is you gotta tell me who that is uh but let me keep going here so anyway this is uh so let's let's get started with the first watch billy's first watch now this is not the first watch because if you read the story 
Um, he got his first Rolex, which probably was a GMT or Submari. Nobody really knows. And he wore that uh, on one of his first missions on the, one of these halo jumps into, I think it was Laos or Cambodia at night. Uh, I, I, yeah, by the way, these things, you know, everything went wrong. He gets, ends up getting shot in the head, uh, left for dead. Okay. The, the NVA, the North Vietnamese Army, right? I mean, they're going crazy, right? Again, there's, by the way, these guys would come in. Basically, it's, you know, it's, it's him and like a couple of guys, right? This is a top picture. It shows like three guys, right? Three of these uh, uh, special forces guys. They jump in at middle of the night uh, and, uh, you know, you know, the, apparently didn't have good intelligence. So, you know, this, listen, this is back in the day, right? Actually, even the, today, you never know, right? There's hundreds of these, maybe thousands of these NVA guys. So they're outnumbered like 500 to one, literally, right? 500 to one. He's shot, left for dead. Um, and um, what do these guys do? And he's, whoa, he's wearing a Rolex. That's right. Billy had a Rolex. And why is he wearing a Rolex? Why would a special forces guy be wearing a Rolex, right? And by the way, back, you know, listen, Rolex was never cheap. Rolex was never cheap. Rolex was always expensive. It was about a month's salary for these guys back in, um, that's right, hit that thumbs up. Uh, back in the, um, you know, back in the, uh, back in the 60s, 70s, it was always about a month's salary for like, you know, average guy, right? It was a month's salary for an average guy, meaning, you know, you know, your average guy, whatever. Like uh, today, average guys, let's call it 75 grand, you know, um, you know, decent job making 75 grand. By the way, the, the, the Navy SEALs, they actually make good money. They make like at least, by the way, they also get combat pay, combat pay. So, you know, they might be making like, you know, 10 grand a month or something. So yeah, today, today a Rolex is same price is a month salary. Back then it was a month salary. The price, it was always expensive. It was never cheap. These guys told me, oh yeah, I could have bought a, this Rolex for 500 bucks in 1968. Yeah, a salary was 500 bucks a month in 1968. Okay, you know, it's, you never win, right? So it's um, uh, really incredible. Anyway, so he shot down. He's wearing his Rolex, probably one of these GMTs or a Submariner, and he's left for dead. Um, they, they they strip him naked, right? They take everything because, you know, hey, he's got, you know, I don't know, they need the, the clothes or whatever. He's got good stuff, right? They obviously take his, you know, everything he's got on him, they take, right? Including his Rolex. That's right. They take his Rolex. The NVA took his Rolex. Somebody out there is probably wearing Billy Wow's Rolex. Um Unbelievable, but true. You know, actually, I think it's interesting. Uh, later on, actually, there was a story, uh, and then you Google this, and it's crazy stuff. There's he 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 met one of the guys that he was trying to kill. Actually, his son or his, yeah, he was trying to kill this a North Korean general. I think in the in the early uh, about ten years ago, he got, went to Vietnam with this journalist, and they had a nice meeting. But he said, Billy, why? I said, listen, I was all for dropping the. You know, uh, using a tactical nuke on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, you know, uh, and, you know, they, they thought he was crazy. No, he says, no, fuck it. I, I, you know, why wouldn't we use a tactical nuke? You know, well, let's say we kill 50,000 people. No big deal. Because, look, in Vietnam, and that would have ended the war. That would have ended the war. Because, look, you know, you had 50,000 American di Americans die, a million Vietnamese die, plus, plus. I mean, the numbers are off the, off the charts. So, uh, anyway, they took his watch. Uh, and he, he was in the hospital for a couple of years, came out back into the special forces, <laughs> retired in, I think, oh, but since it's 1971, that picture of him is in 1971. He's back in action. I mean, this guy's back in action, back in action. After, you know, like crazy story, uh, back in action, jumping at, you know, doing these halo jumps, uh, to, to you know, Laos, Cambodia, middle of all stuff, middle of the night. By the way, guys, if you ever seen this movie, Apocalypse Now, that's basically his life. Apocalypse Now is basically this guy's life. I mean, he was sent on these missions like, uh, you know, uh, Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now. You know, they sent him on a river boat up some river. Nobody's wearing any. And, and these guys, they don't, they're not wearing any uh, insignia on their uniforms, right? It's because if they're captured, <laughs> yeah, well, nobody knows who they are, right? Plausible deniability. It's basically the line of communications is like, um, you know, there's like a, a general or somebody at the CIA and then the president. 
So it's like uh, the general basically orders these guys around, and uh, the general maybe asks permission from Nixon or LB, LBJ at the time, whoever it is, right? It's a very, like, you know, direct line of communication. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, these guys are, are, are captured or whatever it is. You know, nobody knows anything, right? But this guy's literally, his life was like that movie Apocalypse Now, which was this amazing movie. Highly recommend if you have not watched Apocalypse Now, check it out. And by the way, what is Colonel Kurtz? Colonel Kurtz wearing in Apocalypse Now? A Rolex GMT. He was wearing the Rolex GMT, uh, but he ripped off the bezel. He took off the, be the bezel. Uh, there's a whole story about this. That's right. Martin uh, uh, Brando, Mar Marlon Brando's Rolex GMT. Uh, I think uh, what's his name? Um, Francis Ford Coppola told, "Yeah, you got to take you know something. We got to get a different watch because that was actually his watch. That was M Marlon Brando's watch." He says, "Nah, I'm not taking off the. <laughs> I'm not getting a different watch." And he just ripped off the bezel, and uh, you know that watch. I think was up for auction last year. I think in Geneva, whatever. All right, unbelievable but true. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, so what happens next, right? What happens next is it gets even better. He uh, retires, right, after the war. He's got to be like in his 40s or something, 40 or something, right? <laughs> you know, it's like 1975. He goes back to Texas, and he goes to he goes to work for the post office, the U.S. post office. I mean, I don't know if this is a true story, but you know, I guess, look, he's, you know, you got to go back to work. You know, the war is over. You go back to work. He goes back to work for the post. He goes to work for the post office. And, um, you know, apparently he was bored. Uh, I think the CIA, CIA contacts him. Next thing you know, he's working for the CIA. And uh, they sent him to, I think it was Sudan or Libya. So this is a picture of Billy Wow in the 70s. I think he started in the 76. And um, he, um, and this is where... Now, obviously, the, he's getting paid more money, right? He's getting paid more money. It's a whole thing. You know, there's a lot of, you know, all sorts of stuff going on. You know, there's, um, and this is where he get, buys this Rolex Day Date. The president, now, Billy says in an interview that he paid $14,000 for this in 1970s. That's a lot of money, 14 grand. So, 14 grand for this watch, a bust down. So, 14 grand, just to give you a context, 14 grand. 50, because we're talking about almost 50 years ago, right? Uh, 48 years ago. That would be the like the equivalent of like 50,000 today. I mean, now, these things, these bust-down watches were really like, um, I mean, this stuff was like uh, pretty common, actually, especially in the Middle East, right? So this guy's in, again, Libya or, or, or Sudan, uh, you know, the, the, the oil money's flowing around or, you know, whoever the despots are, whether it's, whether it's Gaddafi, whatever. I think he was doing something with Gaddafi uh, or he was training guys. So he was doing something there, right? There's, nobody knows. This is the CIA. He's working for the CIA in Benghazi. Uh, and um, I guess he was getting paid well, right? So why does he buy the watch? It's interesting, right? It's a very Texan type of watch. Uh, you know, diamond bezel. There we go. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, look at this. Hey, Uzi, hop on. We got Uzi, we got the link for you over here. Hop on, hop on. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he had this. I don't know if he's making a joke. I don't know this guy. But this guy, it's funny. You know, the, I was thinking of you when I saw this. I said, like, shit, you know what? I have to I have to reevaluate this. I have to reevaluate this. You know, listen, some people can pull off this look. Because again, I, I said this before. This is like a very Texan look. Now, this, of course, is the uh, oh, he had this watch? Are you serious? You had this watch? Because you have the same watch right now. You have a uh, you have a new one with a tight... You got the, the new model, which is the double quick set, factory diamonds, bezel, and factory um, diamonds on the lugs. Now listen, if Billy was around, if Billy was around, he would have bought your watch because, look, back then, they didn't know anything really. They didn't know. Uh, uh, they didn't know um, about watches. There was uh, opaque. There was no YouTube. There was no Instagram, right? And um, very interesting. So um, 
he gets and again these aftermarket diamonds was you're pretty common it was a really pretty common thing it wasn't a big deal right uh it wasn't like people were like connoisseurs oh no it's got to be you know it was whatever it was what you know because you know jewelry stores that get the watch and by the way this watch probably looked a lot better you know 50 years ago i mean this guy wore it to death right here's a picture of him he's still wearing it like in the you know this is probably 15 20 years ago it's probably around 70 years old and again he died at 93. uzi i can't believe you can't i mean uzi i mean this you you should have met this guy this guy would have been right up your alley i mean is this guy had um he was doing the whole thing he was the real this guy was the real deal right and uh here again said we gotta take we gotta i don't know if you uh, uzi i don't know if you just hopped on here but uh here we have here we have what is that what is that in his hand what is that what is he carrying over there this is in afghanistan circa um probably early 2000s he's got a suppressor is that a, is that some sort of i don't know is that like an ancient k? not a, it's not an ancient k i don't know what that is it's not an ar-15 what is that what is that uzi you're an expert on this um all right anyway so this guy's um in libya uh in sudan he's uh then he's um basically involved in the operation to capture carlos the jackal you know big time terrorist you know in the 70s uh and ironically osama was there right and he was saying that he would the jog past you know osama's compound every like every day like i don't know who jogs apparently this guy was a health nut right jogging jogging that's a big thing um who was jogging in the 70s right it's interesting um but yeah no it gets it gets better right so then uh, and then he's basically he's got to be in the 60s or so he's still working for the CIA different like little things they sent him out there I think the last thing they sent him out was to do surveillance on a guy in Saudi Arabia there's a story uh, there's a book written about him I think um check it out just look up Billy Wow you know and you'll see videos on there's a lady who wrote a whole book on the CIA operations I think called like vanish capture kill something like that um and he was so she told she tells a story this guy was in his um in his <laughs> this is a crazy story he was in his like 70s they sent him out uh there was a navy there was a, a a special forces guy doing surveillance on this other terrorist uh in uh saudi arabia and this guy kind of got nervous he thought his cover was blown or whatever and they sent billy wow in and billy wow basically hides out in a dumpster he hides out in a dumpster of course from this guy's apartment uh like a garbage dumpster right this i mean this you know this guy's you know probably wearing this rolex probably wearing his day date in the dumpster and um he um you know he takes pictures basically you know he gets all the pictures you know why because he sends it up to the guy to make to confirm that this is the guy and of course you know then they kill the guy okay yeah they actually yeah they basically the guy who's the guy's name is um uh I lost the guy he was a uh, you know some terrorist right and uh, they blew him up in uh Lebanon in Beirut they blow him up I think the Mossad blew him up uh they put a um in his car a um what's apparently what the guy got blown up with a um uh in his car he, they put in the headrest of his driver he had a driver right and they I guess they somehow they they swapped out the headrest they put a uh was it semtex i think some sort of uh, explosives with a transmitter and they basically blew up you know the guy in his car and um you know billy wow was back and he was especially basically you know he was um doing uh also work with them he was doing like uh lectures powerpoints for like you know special forces guys like up until like the last day uh and uh then the they they uh he volunteered to go into Afghanistan which is where this picture was taken and he was out there in Tora Bora with let me we show you these pictures hang on a second here we go here we go now this, hang on a second. this is a flat here we go so this over here is at the bottom that's Billy Wow in Afghanistan Billy Wow in Afghanistan and I think that is an AR-15 right Uzi what is that is that an AR-15 um Oh shit! That's, oh, so so Uzi says he bought Billy Wow's Rolex and returned it. How much did you pay? By the way, how much did you pay? Now Billy Wow thinks his watch was worth twenty five grand. That's in the interview. He 
he said that he paid 14 grand and he thought it would be worth around 25 grand today now uh sorry to say i think that watch today again without the billy wow connection right unless you know as is if somebody if somebody just had a watch like that probably worth nine grand on a good good day uh i mean it's basically scrap value really scrap value the diamonds are worth nothing uh it's been beaten to shit probably po I, I think i don't think it's been polished i think it's been naturally just worn down i mean you don't know where this thing is i mean this thing has been all over the world right uh we got to get uzi to tell us about this story here uh so there he is at the bottom picture is him in um Afghanistan, and he's the guy on the far left. Uh, on the far left, the old guy. I mean, all these other guys are you know young guys. He's the old guy. On the far left is a picture of him, and uh, um, it's uh, pretty interesting. So this is uh, this was what was going on. Now, let me back up here. This over here is Billy Wow. In again, this is uh, Vietnam, nineteen seventy one. Again, uh, so this is that's a picture of taking him apparently. June 22nd, 1971, pre-Halo jump, right? So when that picture was taken on the left, he's about to, you know, at night. This is at night, right? He's about to jump out of a plane at night, 20,000 feet up, whatever, and pull pull the cord at around 1,000 feet. And who knows, right? Uh, and at the far right is a picture of him with, again, this is kind of like Apocalypse Now, right? He's a special forces guy. Uh, you know, they send him one of these guys and they have a, like an army of locals, right? These are like, uh, these are probably Cambodians. I think, what are they called? Hmong, Hmong or something, Mo whatever it is. I don't know the thing, the ethnic group um, and whatever it is, local guys. You know, so you know how they'd have it is like one special forces guy and, you know, or whatever, a couple of special forces guy and like 20 locals. That was, that was the, like the force multiplier effect. That was the whole thing of the Green Berets. And that, I guess that's how they do it today. So this, the special forces guys, they train these guys and arm them, all that good stuff. And, um, you know, that was the whole deal. Now, uh, this is Billy Wow. Now, um, here we got another guy, Rick Prado. So why do I bring this up? Uh, this guy, Rick Prado, is another one of these guys. He's still alive. This guy, Rick, is uh, uh, he's probably in his 70s. Uh, and um, Rick, I think, so why do I bring this up? Because Rick um, has, um, I think they asked Billy Wow uh, if it was him ver versus Rick, right? Both of these guys work for the CIA, right? Who, If it was Rick versus Billy Wow, who would win, right? Who would kill who, right? Who would win, right? And uh, Billy Wow said he would cheat. <laughs> he would cheat. He would... Um, Sneak up on Rick the day before and kill him. That's what he said. Uh, here he is. Rick Prado has a Breitling, a Shitter Breitling, a Shitter Breitling, but it's not. It's a Blackwater Breitling. So this is a watch that was, um, you know, Blackwater, which is now called something else, which is, you know, the Blackwater guys, you know, the whole that was the whole um, thing run by Eric Prince. Fascinating guy, Eric Prince. He's got a YouTube channel. Eric Prince, look him up. I mean, brilliant, brilliant guy. I mean, the real deal. Br I mean, genius. Like on a multi-level genius, unbelievable. Um, yeah, Whiskey Reaper. Uh, so I'm going to address this in just a second here. But um, there we go. Happy Easter. Uzi, um, $10 Super Chat. Now, Uzi. You left a comment. You said that you actually had Rick Prado's Rolex. Is that true? Are you are you bullshitting us? Uh, and you you bought it, how, and then you gave it back. You returned it. How much did you pay? You, uh, give us the story of that if you can chat. I know you can't hop on. Maybe we'll get you on the next day. Uh, but anyway, so Rick Prado is another guy out there, and uh, so he's got this Blackwater issued Breitling. I think so. Rick was a consultant for Breitling, probably in the starting in the two thousands in the 2000s um and uh that is his uh he's out there on youtube so the question is <laughs> okay here's the question who wins which collection who would you vote for who would you vote for billy wow 
What do you vote for as today's winner? Leave your nasty and vicious comments below. All you nasty vinyl punters. All you cosplay guys. You know, all these cosplay guys with their Rolex Explorer. You know, you got all these wankers on the internet. Oh, yeah, I got my Rolex Explorer. I take it on adventures. You got this guy barking Jack, barking Jack off. You know, he's, oh, yeah, this is a watch worn, uh, you know, Oh, it was worn to uh, Mount Everest, but alleged, which it wasn't. Whatever. You know, all these guys, they all, uh, you know, they all have these watches that they claim that they take on these adventures. You know, adventures, keyboard warriors. You know, they they do spreadsheet deep dives. I mean, this guy was. These guys were doing you know high altitude jumps, uh, <laughs> wearing a sub, wearing a uh, uh, their GMT, and these guys. These keyboard warriors are doing the only thing they're they're jumping into is a is a four foot pool or a, a spreadsheet. That's where they're deep doing a deep dive. Uh, but yeah, these guys are the so this is the real deal. Now, what, what would you guys vote? Who's the winner? Breitling, Rick Prado's Breitling versus the two watch collection of Billy Wow, Billy Wow, Wow. All right, we got the. Super chat comments. Uh, okay, so Uzi says he bought Rick Prado, excuse me, Billy Wow's watch. This Rolex that we are looking at. This is what he says. I, I, this, I don't think I don't think this guy is a bullshit artist. I think he's he's legit. Uzi, uh, we need to see a picture. Uzi, show us the info because that is a great story. Uh, and he actually has a newer one, right? Uh, now uh, here we go. Shout out to all the USA veterans. Yes, absolutely. Happy Easter. America. America. M-U-R-I-C-A. Right? How do you how do you do this? How do you how do you how do you this is it? See, this is it. This is like that. America. Like this. America. Um, yeah, so interesting story. So um oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. So okay. No, so we were talking about before you jumped in, whiskey, before you jumped in, I was saying, um, so Billy Wow's for you know, all these guys, a lot of these guys had Rolexes they bought, you know, in Vietnam, you know, uh special forces guys, especially, right? Now, here's the question: why were they paying big money? Because it was about a month salary. If you if you just joining, it was about a month salary that they paid, uh, which would have been what and by the way, they were getting combat pay, right? So that sounds about right. Eight hundred bucks, right? So that's ten grand a year. Which you know, 50, we're, we're talking about fifty years ago. Fifty years ago, fifty years ago, ten thousand dollars is the equivalent of like sixty grand today, seventy grand today. Um, so that's what these guys were getting. Uh, and why were they buying Rolex? Well, I think it's because um, you know what? Every, yeah, they knew it was the best watch, right? And you know what? They figured shit. You know, life is short. You know, these guys are living uh, literally, you know, there's death all around them. They can go any minute. They can go any minute. You know what? You know, there's something about these soldiers, guys who are like real, like real soldiers, not like some bullshit guy, you know, like a guy who's a real officer, an officer and a gentleman, you know, like uh, what's his name? Um, Patton, Patton. Now, Pat, they said Patton had the pearl handled, pearl handled, two, he wore two pearl handled. 45s. I think actually it wasn't pearl. I think it was ivory handled, because I because I think pearl pearl handle would be like for pimps. I think somebody said ivory handled revolvers. Anyway, listen, you, you know these guys. You know they figured. Look, I want to get the best. Life is short. I want to have the best. I want to enjoy the best while I'm alive. And you know what? Shit, if something goes wrong. Let's see, you are captured behind enemy lines. Seriously, right? You know the Rolex. You know, you're in Laos, Cambodia. You give it to a local guy. You trade it in. You'll get out. You'll get out. You'll you can barter your way back with a Rolex, a GMT. Try doing that with a Breitling. See, Rick actually was not Rick Prado. See, Rick. Rick was uh, Rick was not really doing like that type of operations, right? Actually, no, he did. I think he did some badass stuff legitimately badass stuff in latin america um but um yeah i don't know if he had a rolex i'm surprised whatever uh, but i don't think you'd get anything for breitling really that blackwater breitling i don't think anybody would give anything for that a gmt yeah for sure for sure 
so yes yeah, so anyway so the story about the guy um yeah there's the story about the guy who bought uh the um Eight hundred dollar Daytona. Yeah, there's a famous thing on, on the on the Antique Road Show. Yeah, look it up. I guess on on YouTube, the famous video, uh, Antique Road Show Vietnam um, Daytona. Yeah, the guy got five hundred. He had a box papers. Now here's the problem with that guy. That guy, I think, was like a uh, you know like a regular guy. Meaning, like I think he was like um, he wasn't a special force. I think he was like a guy. I don't know. He wasn't. A, I don't. I don't think he was. I think he was like a mechanic or something. I don't think I don't know if he was a combat guy. And he never wore the watch. He only wore it, he said a couple of times. I think he had a sticker stick. He wore it like a literally a couple of times. He kept box papers, everything. Um I don't know what his deal was. I don't know what his deal was, but he um he wasn't wearing it in combat. Um these guys were wearing it in combat. Keeping Tom, yeah. So so GMT, obviously, you know, why do they use the GMT? Because you know, they use that uh, Zulu time, right? Military time, you know, 20, 2100 hours, you know, 1300 hours, all that stuff or whatever. Two time zones. You want to know what time it's in Langley, right? Langley, Langley. Hello. Right. Why? Because you want to know the local time, local time. And then you want to know what time is it in Langley where the CIA is. Unbelievable, but true. Yeah. 800 bucks was was a month salary it was big money it was a real investment you know listen as archie luxury famously said back in the day vintage archie he says it's gotta hurt it's gotta hurt when you buy a real watch it's gotta hurt you make it a sacrifice you know it's just like the beers you know got old tomato cans you know, just like the beers the diamond industry was scamming old tomato cans saying hey you know two months two months salary Two months salary is what a diamond should cost you. An engagement ring, two months salary. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, Uzi, five dollar super chat. You know, listen, I, I'll be honest. With you, I don't keep track of all these other streams. You know, we do the show whenever the show goes. Uh, you know, I, I'm not. You know, I'm not here. Whatever, whatever they say, rebel streaming or whatever. Nah, listen, we do the show whenever we do the show. You know. Uh, whatever it's uh god bless right it's a free country you got everybody's <laughs> and listen uh, i gotta tell you something by next week or two weeks from now there's gonna be 10 different streams or well, whatever i don't care you know we're not here to whatever um gold was um how much was gold yeah gold was still i think a couple hundred bucks oh yeah the, yeah the, the guy who bought the uh the daytona um but yeah, keeping yeah. So so anyway, so look. Bottom line is yeah, they want to have a watch. Obviously, that's accurate. You know, back in the day in the sixties, um, yeah. Uh, back in the sixties, back in the sixties, uh, you know, Rolex was known to be reliable. A watch that could take a beating, and you know what else did they have? Timex. I don't know. Timex. Uh, Hamilton. Uh, Long, Longine, definitely not Patek. I mean, you don't want to take a Patek with you. <laughs> you don't want to take a uh, uh, Audemars Piguet. You're not taking an Audemars Piguet into combat with you. Rolex. I mean, let me tell you, the Rolexes were on, you know, a lot of these uh, missions. Um, and uh, there was a guy actually we might talk about later who was a um, – who was a um, – a Navy SEAL on a mission to kill Bin Laden. And what was he wearing? What was this guy wearing on a mission to kill Bin Laden, the Navy SEAL? Uh, we'll do a thing on him later. He was wearing a... Actually, no, I'll pull it up now. I'll pull it up now. Hang on. Can I find it? Ah, oh, shit. Can I... Let me see. He was wearing a... I'll tell you what he was wearing. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I'll tell you what he was wearing. There we go. There we go. You guys ready for this? He was wearing a hey, no date submariner, submariner black. Uh, you know, it's interesting. These guys, you know, the older guys were a little flashier. You know, like Billy Wow. You notice his was the Pepsi. He's got a gold, uh, you know, diamond bezel Rolex. Uh, these younger guys are much more low key. They have the black, black dial black 
uh, Bezel. No date. Actually, I like that. The no date is good. Um, you know, it's interesting. So who? So this is this watch. This is the real watch worn by. Uh, what is his name? His name is uh, Chessy, Chesney, Chesney, uh, Chesney. Hang on a second. Rob Chesney? Will Chesney. Will Chesney, who is the dog handler. The dog handler, you know, they got the big dog uh, on, the, on the Bin Laden raid. He's the guy with the dog that sends the dog in. And uh, why was he wearing this watch? That's him. Look at it. That's him wearing the watch. See, you got a real American. Okay, now see if you can see if you can spot the real American in the photo. See if you can spot the real American. Okay, let's let me give you a hint. One of these guys is a Kenyan, right? Born in Kenya, not and as as his family all admitted, so he's not qualified to be president. Definitely a, a Marxist, raised by communists, Marxist, uh, trained by uh, what's his name, the guy from the Weather Underground, Ayers, Bill Ayers. All the degenerates in Chicago with uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, the 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 preacher there, um, the preacher, you know, in in in, in you know, uh, and uh, you know, of course, the bathhouses. We're not even going to mention the bathhouses. Uh, bathhouse Bar Barry's whole thing, and then you got you know the guy on the far left is a Chinese spy, the Manchurian candidate, literally, literally the Manchurian candidate, who by the way also has a Rolex. The difference is. The guy on the right, he's wearing a Submariner that he bought with his own hard-earned money. Hard-earned money, combat pay. The guy on the left got his blue dial, Rolex Datejust 41, blue dial, beautiful watch. How? From China. That's right, China paid for that watch. Uh, now I'll let you decide who's the real American in this photo. Unbelievable but true. Uh, without getting too much into the politics jeremiah wright that's the guy that is the guy jeremiah wright uh this is the best listen we we'll, we'll give you serious watch content real watch journalism craig we have to keep it we got to keep it we got to keep it politically correct on this show craig uh we got to get the super chats coming in here this is a very expensive channel to support by the way guys make sure you click the like subscribe channel button thing share with all your friends and also, join our weekly newsletter. Get that free weekly newsletter coming to your email box to all the latest watch market info, newest trends, prices. Click the link in the video description below. And you know what? If you want to be a real aristocrat, you want to be a real aristocrat, you got to join our channel as a member. $4.95. Instantly transform your life. Money, women, power, Rolex, Patek, AP, Rolls Royce. It'll all instantly be tracked into your life when you join our cult. That's right. $4.95, you become a real aristocrat, a real baron, an absolute baron, uh, real American watch content. That's right. We got uh, watch lux. Thank you for joining. This is a real baron. This is an aristocrat. You see the little signature next to his name? He's an aristocrat, just like the baron reaper, baron whiskey reaper. You see he's got that little thing next to his name? That means he's a real aristocrat. Craig, Craig is a peasant. Craig does not have that. Once you see, he's he's got he's a member. He's a baron. He's a real aristocrat. Uzi is not an aristocrat, although he does donate super chat, which actually is, is better. Uzi is better because he's actually donates. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say I don't like the word donate. He contributes. It's like you know you contribute to a a religious institution, spiritual enlightenment. We're here all about spiritual enlightenment. Uh, this is also, you see, this man is a baron, Baron Godwa, G. Godwa. We got real, real aristocrats in this chat. Another aristocrat over here. Now, um, another aristocrat, Baron Buff. Happy Easter to you, uh, Baron Reaper. Now, Let's get, uh, let's see, hang on one second. Let's see, we got, uh, we got over here. Let's get back into the, the content here. Okay, so this guy, why was he wearing the Submariner, which you see on his wrist right now? That's him with the dog. That's the, the badass dog. Okay, this is the dog they send in. 
you know, to chase after the guy and jump on him, you know, and these do- these are serious dogs, by the way, really serious dogs. I think they're called Belgian um, Belgian Mastiffs. I don't know. It's a Belgian. It's not a German Shepherd. It's a Belgian dog, and these are like real hardcore dogs, um, which um, apparently need a lot of exercise. You really can't. I mean, they're very smart, uh, very strong dogs, but they, you, you know, you, you like it's not a dog you keep in your apartment, like. <laughs> Yeah, it's not an apartment dog. You like these dogs need like a couple of hours of exercise a day, like serious, you know, whatever. Like they're like working dogs. They like working. Uh, so why was he wearing this watch? Why was this Navy SEAL wearing the watch on the Bin Laden raid? He says the answer is actually simple, but far more profound. And I said it before. Why? Why are these guys wearing the watch? Uh, the the seal wearing the sub will chesney believed he was going to die that night in pakistan chesney reasoned that he might as well take his most meaningful watch with him for his final ride let that sink in right i mean the guy thinks you know he might die right why not go out wearing your best uniform right that's the whole idea a real soldier make sure his boots are polished his uniform is cleanly pressed going into battle you know you ever see that movie master and commander great movie master and commander with uh what's that guy the english uh you know you know on, they're on the ship they're on that boat you know in the caribbean and you know they spot the, the pirates or whatever or the, the french and the english whatever and as soon as he sees the others you know i think he's the this is the british right it's uh what's his name what's the actor who was in gladiator as soon as they spot i mean they're wearing like t-shirts or whatever they're not shirts i mean then basically you know it's hot it's 100 degrees it's humid they're on the ocean but as soon as they see that they're going to go into combat, it's an amazing scene. They put on their uniforms, you know, the whole red, the red coat uniforms, the whole, and these uniforms are not comfortable, but why are they putting on the uniforms? Well, I'm sure there's a practical reason so they know who's who, whatever. But you know what? You want to, if you're going to go out, you want to go out in style. So he said, Chesney reasoned he might as well take his most meaningful watch with him for his final ride. He bluntly told, watches of espionage that's this is the thing the watch would burn up with me if you know if he went down the watch would burn up with him and let's see let's this is this is this guy this is will will chesney that's him he's a dog expert uh great range, range day he's doing a range day uh maybe uzi can join him on a range day in uh hang on a second we got There we go. I don't, I don't know if I can have uh, uh, music because I might get uh, whatever he called copyright. Uh, there's uh, some dog, right? He's got dogs, frisbee, you know, dogs. Yeah, the dogs love frisbee. Why are they shaking? He's doing meth. Yeah, he's giving dog meth. Uh, we got. Uh, he's got some uh, uh, thing there. Uh, dog foundations. Yeah, he's a good looking dog. This is a serious. This is a serious dog. Very serious dog. And uh, what he's got here. Team Dog, we'll give him a, we'll give him a, uh, we'll give him a plug here. I think he's doing dog food called Team Dog. Team Dog, unbelievable but true. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, just let Tan groom you. No need for a ten-year-old. Com- oh, ten-year-old, come on, come on. I- listen, listen. Trolling is trolling is important, right? We gotta have trolling. We love trolling. Trolling is good for everybody. Um, yeah, potential. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for your super chat. Uh, kind sir. Uh, Baron. Bar- Actually, not a Baron. I, sh- I can't say you're a Baron. So it would be like uh, you go, Mel Gibson. No, no. It is not Mel Gibson. Uh, now. That's right. Contribute now. Contributions. 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 Uh, so who's that? Big Mike. Big Mike. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think he was talking about Big Mike. You, were you talking about? Hang on a sec. I guess you were talking about the other guy. Big Mike would have been. Wait, how do we go back to Big Mike? Uh, Big Mike. What, wait, what is this guy here? What is this guy? What is he wearing? Uh, Cabot. What? Shitter watch. Sorry, shitter watches. There we go. Okay, Big Mike. Big Mike is married to the guy in the middle. Big Mike. Uh, we all know who Big Mike is. 
uh unbelievable but true uh let's see here uh russell crowe russell crowe was the guy in master and commander great movie so we're giving you not only do we give you not only do we give you um real serious watch content we also give you uh movie recommendations that's right so you got two great movie recommendations today every show we give you different movies uh show number movie number one is guys if you have not seen i i don't is that apparently there's tomato cans and crayon eaters out there who have not seen one of the greatest movies ever made which is apocalypse now apocalypse now you know, rent it on DVD. Actually, if I were you, actually, do they still sell DVDs? I don't even know if they sell DVDs. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a DVD player. Uh, but um, the DVD uh, Apocalypse Now. I get the Apocalypse Now because I think they have commentary, or whatever, with Francis Ford Coppola. I think I had that. I think I own. I may. I actually may still own it. But you got to get Apocalypse Now. It, it's basically. It's almost like the story of this guy. It's basically the story of Billy Wow, dramatized. I mean, really, that's that's the story. It's that type of action. You know, they, they send you on a boat up a river. Nobody tells you. It's like that line with. Uh, hang on a second. I got to give you that line. Oh, wait, can I use this on YouTube? Hopefully, they don't block me. Oh, wait, wait, hang on a second. I got to show you one more thing here. Yeah, we're doing serious watch content here, so uh, we're also going to show you the uh, Billy Wow watches. But yeah, I would tell you guys. Uh, yeah, check out. You got to get uh, Apocalypse Now, and you also want to see Master and Commander. Uh, Suckerhorn. What happened to Suckerhorn? I, I really like that guy. Uh, is he still alive? What happened to Suckerhorn? I remember seeing him on Archie's show. That guy was a real character. He was a great guy. Um, if somebody can you know, hook me up, I'd love to have Suckerhorn on. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about the uh, – let's wrap it up here. We're going to be wrapping up in a couple of minutes. We got um, – Okay, so let's see you want to buy one of these uh, Billy Wow uh, GMTs, the Pepsi. They're about 15 grand, 15 Gs. Now, Billy's has been beaten to shit, right? It's been beaten to shit. It's kind of like this one here, 79, maybe a little bit earlier, right? Uh, it's been beaten to shit. So, I mean, the only what makes his valuable is the story, obviously. Hopefully, it has a cool insignia. It's probably owned by his family right now, so, you know, it's not for sale. Um, but, uh, if it was, if it was, it'd probably be, you know, be worth serious money. And what did Uzi pay? U How much did Uzi pay for his Rolex, uh, day date? His, uh, Billy Wow. I mean, the Billy Wow day date. I mean, that was the real Billy Wow. How much did he pay for it? And he's, which he shipped it back to eBay. Uh, but, uh, I would say that watch as a regular watch would be worth nine grand. The GMT, again, roughly in Billy's condition, roughly, you know, 14 grand, I would say. His has been beaten to shit. Again, obviously, you know, the story value, if you actually have his, it's worth, you know, significantly more. Uh, at auction, at auction, it could be get could get real money. This is the uh this is the um the GMTs. Uh, again, this is the Pepsi, the Pepsi, which I think is pretty cool. I think this is pretty cool. Um, again, I, you know, a GMT, I mean, my choice would be, again, apparently the younger guys, the younger guys these days, you know, they have the black dial. They're doing the black dial. Why? Because they got no taste. They don't have that swagger. They don't have the swagger. They don't have the swagger. Swagger. Uh, Rolex. They date. Uh, and this is the Billy Waug. Um, uh, Rolex, they date except his is a bust down, um, stretched out, banged out. Uh, again, you can see these are pretty cheap. Uh, again, the problem is the bust down really takes away value. Really, it takes away value. Uh, aspect and the, the condition, the stretch, the whole thing. So this is kind of like a, what a a bust down goes for clean. This is a clean 80s bust down, better condition bracelet, uh, polished. Uh, yeah, I mean, 11 grand, but really it's much less. More newer diamonds, the whole deal. Um, of course, look, his is worth more money because of the whole, look at this. So you got all these 
tomato can watchers out there, what the hell is this? I don't even know what this is. Some sort of custom cockamamie. What, what does it say? Some guy in Mexico. This is like a drug dealer's watch. This is like, I mean, this is like, this is like, I don't know who 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 who, who wears this. This is like, I don't know, Pablo Escobar or something. That's a Pablo Escobar watch. Let's see. Can we find a comparable day date with a with a decent bust? Okay, here we go. There we go. So, uh, basically, this is a this is a cleaner Billy Wild, nineteen seventy. So right around that era, with um, uh, a little better diamonds. The diamonds look a little bit cleaner here. Nineteen seventy. I don't I don't know if these. I think these diamonds are probably put on later. This looks like a later edition. To me, again, I'm not. I'm not really an expert on this, not my thing. But again, look at the stretch here. Uh, so yeah, you can get one of these. I, I would say, do not pay. I, again, do not pay for the, if you're getting one of these watches and it's not a from Billy Wow. The watch is unsellable. It's worth maybe nine grand, maybe nine grand. Uh, yeah, hard pass. Um, so let's get back to the Billy Wow Rolex. His has got the black dial. Interesting. The black dial is the more of a, you know, I, I like the black dial. It's got more of a contrast, you know, a little more of a badass thing, right? With the diamonds, very Texan like, very Texas, you know, all business. Now, you know, why did he get the black dial? Well, probably was the only watch available, right? Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe he had a choice and he chose the black dial because it's very Texas very texas you know black oil you know the black gold uzi how much did you pay for the billy wow watch on ebay what did you pay for it and why did you send it back why did you send it back uh unbelievable so yeah um apocalypse now five star movies yeah five i would say yeah a uh, master and commander also very good movie. Let me see if I can pull up a clip of. Um, let me see if I can pull up. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can pull up a good clip here. Uh, see if I can pull up this without getting. Uh, hang on. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Let me see if I can pull this up without getting like what he called uh, whatever they call you. Yeah. With extreme, okay. Here we go. Okay. Hang on. Wait, let me see if I can. Hold this up. Okay. Hang oh, fuck it. You know what? I'm going to play it. Okay, I'll play it. I'll play it. Hang on a second. Hang on a second, guys. Mini player. Theater mode. Okay, here we go. Okay, guys, ready for this? Hang on a second. I'm going to give you something cool. Okay, here we go. Can you see this? This is the famous scene, the infamous scene in Apocalypse Now where um, Martin Sheen, Charlie Sheen's father, right? great actress. I mean, really literally like, like you know super i mean ultra 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 talented guys martin sheen charlie sheen unbelievable scene and harrison ford is in the scene and uh he's being given instructions to terminate the colonel's command not not this colonel now by the way i am a legitimate colonel i know you guys are saying you know i'm a fake army i i would i never claimed i was in the military i am a legitimate colonel i will reveal one day how I'm a legitimate 100% authentic colonel. Now, I have told you guys I was in Vietnam and I shot down like 30 or 40 MiGs. You know, that's how I got. To... That story might be exaggerated, possibly exaggerated. I, I can't confirm or deny, but I actually am a legitimate colonel. Now, let's play this from Apocalypse Now. See if I can play it. How much can I play before getting banned or whatever? In this war, things get confused out there. Getting confused. Our, yes, our our support. Dual morality and practical military necessity. But out there with these natives. Yeah, let, let me let me pop to the good scene. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Okay, this is Charlie Sheen. He's listening to this. Every man has got a breaking point. Every man's got a breaking point. You and I have. Walt Kurtz has reached his. Your mission is to proceed up the Nung River in a Navy patrol boat. <clears throat> Pick up Colonel Kurtz's path at Numang Ba. Follow it. Learn what you can along the way. When you find the Colonel, infiltrate his team by <clears throat> whatever means available. And 
Here comes the good part. Here comes the good part. And terminate the colonel's command. out there operating without any decent restraint, totally beyond the pale of any acceptable human conduct. Here's the CIA guy. That's the CIA guy. Terminate with extreme prejudice. There it is. Boom. Boom. Extreme prejudice. Unbelievable. Oh, shit. 15 seconds. Uh, man, they're not gonna let me. They're not gonna let me uh, monetize the video. Ah, how much did this guy? Pay? I think he paid nine grand. I'm trying to get an answer from Uzi. How much did he pay for his Billy Wow? Is it nine? I don't know. Is he saying nine grand? I, I, this guy speak English? I don't know. Uh, bad lighting. It's a blue. He thinks it's a blue dial. Interesting. Uh, well, we'll see another picture. I think it's black. I'm 99% sure it's black. <clears throat> yeah, no, those are unbelievable, unbelievable actors. Uh, oh, here we go. Boom. 12 grand. 12 grand. Wow. Do you still have any info from the original listing? That would be a cool. If you have like Check your email if you have like the receipt with a photo and all that stuff. That is a that would be very, very cool. If you can send a screenshot of that, like the original, like you know, eBay sends you like whatever receipt of bullshit, like in your account, maybe in your account, like history shows purchase. I mean, that is a good story. So 12 grand. Now, 12 grand. Did they did they now when they sold that watch, were they selling it as Billy Wow's watch? Or was it um sold as I don't know? Yeah, 12 grand is if if it's sold as a regular watch, it's a hard, hard, hard pass. I mean, it's like nine grand. It's a meltdown watch because it's really just stretched and banged out to shit. Uh, but um, yeah, unbelievable but true here. Uh, let's go back to this here. Um, yeah, so that was Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen in that unbelievable movie. Um, so let's, uh, let's, okay, so, what? oh, it wasn't Billy's watch, oh, oh fuck, <laughs> jeez, for 10 minutes, he had me going here, okay, oh, it was just a regular bust down, oh, shit, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, that was smart to return that watch, absolutely, like, or, I mean, the watch, now, the pro, I'm assuming that the watch that you bought was probably in better condition, I mean, it, was, and not, it wasn't like this one, it's probably better condition, bust down uh and yeah i mean they are going for on chrono you see those things going for the yeah you know, we just saw that 12 grand it is a super hard pass absolutely uh nobody should ever wear a bust down rolex now you know what um unless it's got like a really crazy story with an engraved thing in the back but yeah you know listen you, the thing that you have here's my issue by the way with yours uzi here's my issue with your Rolex uh, with the factory is the small diamonds, and I think you'll get this right. The small diamonds, these little round diamonds, they're kind of feminine, right? It's they're very feminine. The baguette diamonds, which are the more square, the square shapes, which you didn't like, which we saw in the platinum or whatever, it, you know, and you have baguette markers, diamond markers instead of these little round ones. It's just a more masculine look. I mean, it's kind of look because again, when you're doing diamonds, it's like you know, it's it's kind of girly, right? So uh, you, you know, unless you're Billy Wow, you, you, it's hard to pull off that look, right? Um, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, you got you want to have the baguettes on it. Uh, the other thing is this. Here's the other reason why not to have the uh, these round baby diamonds on the thing. Uh, which actually, I forgot to say it. I didn't articulate, but I saw somebody mention this somewhere the other day. Is it's the it's the bezel, the bezel, the bezel, as the people called. I call it the bezel. You call it the bezel. The Rolex bezel is what makes the watch. You know that fluted, that fluted day date president date just that fluted bezel, which you know glimmers in the light. That crisp, crisp 
uh, Bezel. Uh, that is what makes Rolex. And everybody knows it, that look. But when you put the diamonds on it, it it's a, it's not a Rolex anymore. It really, it really, listen, it's like when you have, again, let me, let me show you. When you have, let's go back to this. Let's go back to this. Uh, okay, so there we go. Look, you see on the right is the classic day just, you know, whatever, a basic, basic day just. Yeah, it's really 10 grand, nine grand, 10 grand. Um, it's the bezel. You see the, the you see this, uh, you know, the, um, it's the fluting. That's the whole look. That is the Rolex look. If you want a Rolex, it's got to look like a Rolex. When you do this, I don't know what this is. Nobody knows what this is anymore. Seriously. Unless the only thing they can see is maybe the, the bracelet. That's the only thing that identifies it possibly as a Rolex. Uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think round diamonds are feminine? The round diamonds are feminine versus versus. I'll show you this. Uh, let's see. Uh, bag baguette dial. Okay, here we go. Now, I don't know if these are, I'm just doing a search. I don't know if this is going to be baguette. Uh, okay, let's see if I can pull this up high to low. I'm trying to just find an example here. Just find an example. Okay, so you see these baby dumps. Okay, these are baby dumps. We're, okay, we're getting into the baguettes here. Okay, this is a gold watch. Okay, okay, look at this. Okay, this is a platinum watch, excuse me. Okay, you see this, these baguettes, so these elongated shapes. I don't know. To me, that just looks more manly. I I would wear something like this. I would wear it in gold, in white gold. What I I I would wear. I would wear. It, it looks more manly. I, I, you know, and it's got the the markers. These elongated, you know, more masculine looking markers. Uh, the round little baby ones just look like. It just looks like a girly watch. It, it's like a lady boy watch. I mean, I'm sorry to tell you this. I'm sorry to tell you this. That you, you, if you you're wearing a lady boy watch. You know, uh, you know, we're just look, this channel is all about giving you the truth. Can you handle the truth is the question. Can you handle the truth is the question. Now, this is hang on a second. Somebody join us. We got. Oh, is that Uzi? Hold on. Yes. Yes. Hold on. Fuck. Hold on. Is that I don't it doesn't sound like is it Uzi? <laughs> I think we got an imposter. We had an imposter. Oh, shit. Hang on a sec. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I wasn't. Sorry, guys. Sorry. FM. I need to get a producer here. I need to get a producer. Hang on, guys. Hang on a sec. Let me let me pull this up. Let me pull up Uzi's thing here. Let me pull up Uzi. We got to leave the super chat in honor of Uzi. Uh, I think we had an imposter. We had an imposter. See, I, I know how to spot these imposters. Okay, guys, here we go. Here's what I was trying to show you. Hang on a second. Here's what I was trying to show you before I get back to the thing. Okay, so we got, can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Yeah, we're seeing the screen. Hang on a second. Uh, Uzi, hang on a second. Uzi, you got to show your face. I don't know if it's you yet. Uh, I see you in the green room, but okay. So here we go. This over here is the manly baguettes. See? Elongated shape, square, rectangle, manly, manly, baguette, elongated. This is manly. This is a man's watch. Okay. Platinum. Ice blue. Very nice. I would wear this. Now, you get into the little ones like this. You see these shapes, these little round ones? Feminine, girly watch, pimp watch. Not, not, not manly. Uh, I'm just telling you the way it is. Okay. Again, this is a cheaper. Oh, ooh. this is a disgusting watch. This is a piece of garbage. This is a meteorite, but with a disgusting disgusting with these tear drops it's absolutely disgusting it's a disgrace to human listen this watch is a bigger disgrace to you know when that cia guy was saying to terminate the colonel's command because he's he's a beyond the pale of all decent behavior 